et le YouTube. No, your eyes do not betray you. The fake Merc character studies are continuing starting today with part 18. I am certain that some of you thought that I was going to end the series. I've seen it in the comments. And I'm certain also that Jason was hoping deep down that I had given up. But if you know me, you know that I never give up. This was just a break. A break that, by the way, was scheduled for the people who actually paid attention. You knew that there wasn't going to be any episode last month for reasons I'm going to get into. But for you, Jason, because I now have the certitude and confirmation that you watch every single one of my videos, including the fake milk character study, this one is payback for the time where at Thanksgiving you made fun of the Indian Americans, whatever you want to call them, the natives, with your face stuffed with turkey and with peck and pie, and you make jokes about genocides and you made everyone feel super uncomfortable. Well, I'm sure that you wish you could go back to these days where you actually had people to eat with at Thanksgiving dinner. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen this year. Instead, you are going to feast on men's and you're going to be, as we say in French, le dindon de la farce. You are the turkey put on the table that we're going to stuff together. No homo. Okay, so for the people wondering why there wasn't any episode last month, it's very simple. An event happened that gave Bloho a respite. A respite that I had promised to give him if he fulfilled certain requirements. And if you have, again, paid attention and looked at what happened in the Bloho verse last month, you should have noticed and realized that he participated in a charity meet, a charity event. That's not the reason why I gave him a month off. It's not enough to repay for his sins. What he did after the meet is the reason why. And what he did is incredible. What he did blew my mind. I have a PhD in, in blohotology, and yet I was still extremely surprised. I had no idea it was going to go down that path, but it did happen. And so I had to fulfill my engagement and, you know, stay true to my word. Because I had told Bloho that if he apologized, if he made amends, I would give him a month off. I would delay the release of these episodes for a month. And lo and behold, he did apologize. For the people who haven't noticed, he posted a public apology where he said sorry to all of the, uh, the veterans he threatened, all of the people he made fun of who had PTSD, etc., etc., which never happened. Okay, it never happened. He pretended that he did so on his channel. It wasn't the case. Every single time he would post a video talking about the fake Merck stuff, he always tried to reverse psychology, his approach. He would say, oh, well, I was just crawling, guys. So if you believe me, you're actually just an idiot or a retard. This time he went all in. He just let it all bear and he said, okay, I'm a piece of shit for what I've done. And I apologize humbly. He sent a direct message to one of the person who was running the powerlifting meet and he apologized straight up with no weird, again, misdirection. It was an actual good apology. If you haven't read it, it was on his Facebook. Sadly, he didn't put it on his YouTube page because he's still, you know, trying to pretend to be a tough badass on this certain social media platform. But to me, it's good enough because he did extend an actual hand and it was accepted by someone who was a veteran themselves. So to me, that counts. That is, that is valid. And again, for those who have been following the Blohovers for a long time, you know how meaningful that is. Dozens of people throughout the years have made attacks, have made special videos dedicated to exposing Jason. He never once apologized for anything. And suddenly he does it. Now, Call me crazy, but I think that I have had a massive impact on this. I think that I, in reality, is the one to blame or to thank for this scenario and this reversal of fate, because following certain allegations I made, where I told him that I had access to certain messages, he suddenly goes and apologizes. And he does exactly what I told him to do as well. It's exactly in the fashion I described. So... Again, Jason, congratulations. You're starting to become a proper human being. If we continue that way, maybe this series will even be deleted. Who knows? 
because at the end of the day, we're making fun of you because you're a piece of shit. But if there's nothing to be made, made fun of, well, the series doesn't need to exist anymore, right? I'm certain that this is not something you guys want to hear. You will see that there is no reason to be threatened or to panic because the likelihood of that happening is extremely low. But it did happen last time. I've, I've said in part 17, I would give him a month off. So I gave him a month off. Uh, you should really read his apology, by the way. It's great. Uh, he calls himself a piece of shit. He says that if someone wants to come up to him and punch him in the face, he would accept it. That's good news. If you come across Bloho in real life, now you know that you have his permission to suck him in the face. Not that you need it. I mean, you could have done it at any time. He wouldn't be able to defend himself. But still, it can be a fun time if you know if your life is tough and you need some respite. You can just fly down to Houston, Texas, find where he goes to Costco or whatever, soup kitchen he gets his frozen chicken at and just punch him in the face for free and then you can just say that you're a veteran and it's just payback maybe we're going to open a, like a, like separate categories of different types of people who get to punch him so for example we start with just veterans and then you're going to start apologizing to more and more people jason like for example the native americans then muslims then latino immigrants then the gays whatever and we'll have each groups that will be able to punch you in the face so we'll organize like meetings and we'll just put all of these people in a shuttle and we'll just drive them down south so that they can just line up in front of your apartment that is a way for you to atone so maybe we can organize that you'll let me know could be a good way for you to not have to pay for the dentist either you have so many rotten teeth instead of paying out of the taxpayer's pocket to have them pulled out just get punched in the face and then spit them out it'll be a bit painful but at the end of the day it, it is what it is so that is for what happened and i'm sure that a lot of you guys didn't notice that because you are really focused on the meat in itself which isn't super interesting or anything but since so many people wanted me to actually talk about it I will. So the big, uh, the big deadlift meet. First off, it wasn't technically a meet because it wasn't official. There wasn't any prize. There wasn't a ranking. It was a charity event, which means that it wasn't following actual powerlifting rules, which doesn't mean that the lifts were not valid. They just don't count because they don't go into any books. But from what I've seen, the lifts are good. It's not like they're cheating or anything. And for the people who said that he used fake plates, no, that's nonsense. I couldn't actually contact anyone at the meet to see if they had fake plates, but looking at them, I mean, nothing was wrong. There was one pair of mismatched plates that were gray. They did look suspicious, but I don't see why they would use fake plates at a charity meet unless they're like really pathetic, which could be a possibility because Jason was allowed in the meet. So who knows? But I did my research on the gym and I checked out the few members and the owners. They look like decent people. So I don't believe that's what happened. What happened, however, is that Jason pulled, I believe, something like 620. And people weren't insane because in their mind, that's a lot of weight. Well, it's not, first off. And two, you will quickly get to understand that the only way for Jason to pass as a powerlifter is for noobs to consume his content because they don't know any better. So if you are duped by it and you are impressed, well, you fall into that category of people who don't know much about lifting. So let me tell you why this lift was no surprise. Because people act as if it was amazing and out of the blue, like it's the big proof that he's strong or his methods work. No, that's what he's always been able to pull. There's, there's no progression or anything here. First off, the pull was done on a deadlift bar. If you know what a deadlift bar is, it's a longer bar, it's thinner, and it has a whip. It's very flexible. It adds pounds to the bar. It makes it easier to pull more weights. How much more easier? Well, it depends on who you ask. So for me, I'm going to go off of someone who's an expert and one of the best deadlifters on earth, aka Keller Woolen. And Keller Woolen has said on camera that for a 600 pound pull, you can add between 20 and 25 upwards of 30 pounds to the bar. So if you can pull, for example, 600 with a stiff, you can pull around 630 with a deadlift bar. And that's something I've noticed myself. So that's the first step. So his 620 pull is in reality a 600 pound pull, okay? Which is still a lot of weight, right? It, there's no fake plates involved here. The lift was deadlift only, meaning that you would be much stronger at the deadlift in a meet where you don't have to squat and bench beforehand. That's also a given. 
Then there was also the fact that there wasn't a weight class, so you could show up at any given weight, and you can bet your ass that he showed up much higher than his actual weight class for powerlifting. Because keep in mind that when he competes, he competes underneath 200 pounds. And when he competes in that class, he pulls 585. So 585 is his best pull in competition when he has to diet down. He pulled 600 here on a stiff bar, it would be the equivalent. So there is no difference. He has pulled what he's always been able to pull. And so this just proves one thing, that in the span of what, five, four years, he has made zero progress. Because the last meet we have on record of him deadlifting was in Britain, I believe. And keep in mind also that back then, as I just described, he pulled 585 on a stiff bar after squatting and benching. So he should have been able to pull more. So if we give him an estimate that would be more conservative, I would say maybe 600 pounds he could have pulled back then. Then you add the additional weight that he weights now. So maybe 620, then the deadlift bar. So if he had made zero progress whatsoever, he should be able to pull 650 right now on a deadlift bar. He pulled 620. So he has actively regressed. And that's something that he knows, but something that his subscribers don't pay attention to. So that's that for the deadlift. Again, I wasn't surprised. But because you paid attention to the deadlift and you were, for some reason, impressed, you didn't pay attention to the important things, which is the allegations of fake weights that he is very susceptible to and the meat in itself. Guys, you are so, you're spoiled. I spoil you too much. I feed you men directly in your beak like a baby bird. And now you have become completely immune to the actual quality of the men's. There was something insane happening at the meat and you didn't even pay attention. So I'm going to tell you, but first, let's speak about the fake weights because Jason actually mentioned me on his channel. Again, because he's a coward, he didn't say my name, but he did say that someone who's a pathological liar was calling him out on using fake weights. Now, Jason, between you and I, I think we both know who the pathological liar is, because if you want to be reminded, you're still the dude who pretends to not be bored when we can all see your bored scalp. We can all see it. And you still somehow think that you got us fooled. So if someone has a pathology between us, it's you. After that, we can talk about the fact that he's really annoyed with the fake weight stuff. He only answers to things that are true. It, he's so easy to pierce and so easy to read through because every single time you say something that is correct, that you have no proof for, uh, for he goes out and he confirms it. Because when he rags on, on about fake plates, well, he reveals his hand. Because to me, that deadlift meat is the proof of fake plates. Why? For one simple reason. A year ago, he pulled 625 on a stiff bar, which would be, again, a 650 pull if it were to be on a deadlift bar. He didn't pull 650. So a year ago, okay, a year removed from training, so you take one year of lifting away, he was 25 to 30 pounds stronger. How does that make sense? Either he regressed massively or he used fake plates back then. And I still stand with my fake plates analysis because, surprise, surprise, he got rid of every single visible plate that I pointed out as being suspect. Some of them he kept, like the blue rogue plates that are really fake plates, but the other ones, what are they? What are the yellow plates? What are the green plates? What are the, the weird black plates? They're all gone. He doesn't use them anymore. Why? Well, I think because he was starting to get scared that people are going to figure it out. And on top of that, he also got rid of his bumpers. The bumpers that I said were suspicious, he got rid of. And it's so interesting because recently I got to see them in real life. I got to see those rogue uh, bumper plates. And guess what? They're really clear. Like they're, they're really a bright red, but they're really clear. The ones he had were way too dark. These were a different brand of plates. And nowadays, when you look at him and the way he pulls on what I think, I believe, is calibrated plates, well, these are real. But this time, he shows them. This time, he shows the inside of the plate. 
which he never did with the red bumper plates. He always sandwiched them between two other plates. So that to me is still a sign. But if you look at his bar, he still has those blue plates, those blue plates that I believe are fake. So there are still a lot of suspicions. Suspicions that might have had are very easy to disprove. Because if what I'm saying is a lie and I'm actually a liar, well, it's very easy. Just show the plates, then put them on the bar and then pull the bar without cutting the camera. I've been saying that for a year. He hasn't done it yet. And I know he watches the videos. So just do it. Then you can call me a liar. I will have no problem backing down and saying that I was wrong. And I will do it in this video because just like I gave him a month off for the apology, I also must say one thing. He might be in his best shape ever. Meaning that I've seen a few of his videos now. He actually lost fat for once in like five or four or five years. He actually looks semi-decent based off of what it looks like usually, of course. I mean, he went from a pile of shit to a pile of toot. So we're, we're moving in the right direction. But I truly do think that you owe me a large portion of thanks for that. I, I deserve some credit for that. Because I think that I bullied you into fixing your life. Something that no one had done before. Because again, there are videos out there with hundreds of thousands of, uh, of views, sometimes a million views about him and it never did anything. And somehow ever since the series started, he started to act properly. Well, I think it's because I'm starting to get into the bottom of things. I'm pointing out things that he's actually very susceptible about. But talking about things that you are susceptible about, Jason, we need to talk about your get-up at the meet. I don't know if someone pulled an elaborate prank on you or if someone told you it was supposed to be Halloween-themed, but why did you show up wearing a cape? And why did you show up wearing booty shorts? Hello? You know that normal adults don't do that, right? Even at a toga party, it would be extremely upsetting. But everyone else was wearing normal clothing. Everyone at the meet, if you didn't pay attention to that because you were matrixed by the plates, everyone else was just in a normal gym attire. He's the only one who showed up shirtless in booty shorts with a red cape. I'm starting to suspect you might have a fetish involving dresses and panties and capes because you already pulled out in the past when you dressed up as a Spartan for the camera. I don't know what's up with that. I just don't want to be involved. I don't want to have to look at your fat thighs. Just don't do that to people, especially if you're then going to just spug out for the rest of the meet because even though I couldn't actually contact people running the meet, I could contact people who were part of the meet and what they told me about you is not much because apparently you spoke to no one. You are just a complete pariah. And it's something that is reflected in the pictures. You can go on their Facebook page and look at the pictures. In every single one of them, you have like the frame and you have everyone on the frame. And then like at the bottom left corner, there's Jason just standing like this. What's up, bud? I thought you were like a social butterfly. Why, why don't you talk to people? Why aren't you closer to people? He's always in the back away from everyone else. And I know that it's because uh, actually people didn't want him there. He was lucky that no one punched him, but people knew what he did to veterans. So even though he apologized afterwards, it wasn't enough in the moment. But something that cracked me up with the picture too is that it verified my theory about his height. Because one of the guys I spoke to uh, was actually in the picture with him. And that guy is 5'7". And in the picture, he's like this. And Jason is like this. So he is indeed 5'4". And you can verify it. He's the smallest and the shortest in every picture. So I think that actually him moving in the back is a strategy so that he can pretend that it's just angles. But unless we're at standing on a box near the wall, I don't think that perspective can make you look like a dwarf when you're right next to normal people. I just think that you're that short. And it's, it's fine to be a midget, but just admit it to yourself. So that is the meant about the cape. But, as I said, uh, beyond that massive cringe of showing up looking like some discount Superman to a politing meet that didn't require it, there's a lot of good changes happening, right? So you have the apology, but for the people who haven't noticed, it's not the only thing. One, he created playlists, again, after I suggested that in my fake mug videos. He also posted the sled drags that I spoke about in part 17. At this point, I'm fully certain that if I start saying that you don't know how to 
Uh, I don't know, juggle, you're going to post a video proving that you can juggle, which we would all appreciate. But it's interesting to see that when he posted the sled drags, he did them on the grass. If you watch part 17, I told him that I spoke to the guy who owns the building or at least the business in the building next to his house and that there was damage on the road because of his sled drags. So next time he does it, where does he go? On the grass. Good dog. Good dog, Jason. You did good. You're doing what you're supposed to do. I believe that if you continue listening to me and you take my advice, we can truly make something out of you. We can truly fix you, per se. Your dad didn't really manage because he wasn't using the right approach. I think I figured you out. You're not really receptive to threats or anything like this. You're really receptive to humiliation. Maybe it's something that you even enjoy sexually. I don't know. I don't want to know. But it works really well when I point out what you do wrong. So you posted the sled drags, that is good. Now I'm still waiting for a video of you swimming. Because as I said, I don't believe you can swim. So since you apparently do whatever I tell you to do, you will do it as well, right? And you will pretend that it's popular demand. People have been asking you for a sled drag video for five, no, not five years, I'm exaggerating, maybe two, three years, and you never obliged. And you somehow obliged a month after I make a video about it. Yeah, very convenient. Uh, but it goes beyond that. Because not only does he do what I tell him to do, he's starting to also mimic me. He's very similar in that aspect to another guy I'm not going to name that maybe you're going to recognize, who tends to copy every single male that he respects to an extent or another, where he ends up just a copycat, just like Jason again, who copied Eric Bogenhagen when he was becoming big on YouTube and he started doing Bulgarian that he then gave up very quickly because he couldn't hack it. But it's something that he did. For a spell, he tried to be the boogs. Then he realized that when you're 5'4", bald, and you have disgusting, ugly brown eyes, well, you can't really pretend to be a 6'2", Viking god with blue eyes. It doesn't really work, right? The power of imagination only goes so far. But now he's, he's trying to be me. And I say he's trying to be me because I'm starting to see some weird things on his Facebook that are making me a bit suspicious. First off, he's copying my videos, which is not a surprise. He's not the only YouTuber to do that. But for him, he basically takes my argument and then he says the exact opposite, which sort of defeats the purpose, Jason, because usually when I say something, it tends to be correct. So if you say the opposite, it's bad advice. But more than that, he started posting memes about anime and manga on his Facebook. A 46-year-old boomer with no teeth whatsoever is now posting anime dank memes on his Facebook. Where do you think he got that from? Here, a year ago, he hated anime and all of that shit. He would post about it and say, oh, it's for kids. And now he, he posts berserk memes. For the people who don't know what berserk is, too bad for you, you're missing out. But for the others, you know the significance. Because we both know that if he actually reads Berserk, we might fix him. Like the, sh the, 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 the manga, the story might actually fix him. Plus, there's a character in it that looks like him a lot. It's the guy that tortures Griffith because he has no teeth, he's bald and small. So maybe you will even have the ability to, uh, to relate to someone for once in, in fiction who's not like an elf or a, a gremlin from whatever show you're watching. But that is also a bit concerning because if you start to copy me, when can we expect Bloho to show up on camera wearing a wig? Ima can you imagine that? He shows up on camera one day with like a, with dark hair, a dark haired wig, and he tries to pass it out as, oh no guys, it's just, I just grew my hair because I'm not bald. Remember, this is just two days worth of growth. It's my real hair. It's not a toupee. Wouldn't that be amazing? I would pay to hear Bloho try to replicate a French accent just for the heck of it. You never know, right? The thing with people with vulnerable narcissism is that they have no personality to speak of, so they're always trying to copy others. It would be fairly hilarious if you tried to copy me. But if you don't copy me, Jason, at least continue to listen to me because this could lead to your redemption, something that Again, people who love the men's are not too keen on hearing, but you have to understand one thing. It's over, right? And I think you know it. I think you know that the age of insane men's is over, right? This lolcow is dry. 
its golden age of milk production is way gone. Jason is never going to go back to the crazy times where he ranted about being a mercenary and a reptilian because he's been burned too many times. Even though he's actually dense as a rock, after, when, you, when you beat a dog enough times, the dog learns. And I'm not advocating beating your dogs. I'm just saying that in this case, he is the dog that has learned through punishment. And I think that this past year and a half of nonstop fake mug videos has just taken the life out of him and he's done. And you can tell because his channel is now super boring. So boring actually that some of you are starting to go crazy. You're starting to go ment crazy. You are experiencing severe ment withdrawal syndromes because he's not providing them anymore. So you're looking to me to provide them. But the problem is that I can't invent it. If he decides to bore you to death, well, I mean, he'll do it. At least someone commented that and I think they're right. What he's trying to do is he's trying to win by boring people to death. Because when you're a lol cow, people are going to keep watching and hating you as long as you make them laugh. But if you just stop doing anything remotely interesting, these people lose interest. And you see that on his channel, his channel is pretty much dead. Because the people who hate watch him are also gone. So it's something you're going to have to accept, right? I'm not going to stop the series, but understand that most of the men's I'm going to talk about are either in the past or undocumented men's. Few of them you're going to have access to because he doesn't really put them on camera anymore because he's trying to pull a redemption arc, a real one this time, not one where you pretend to be Christian to back some bony chick. This time it actually might be it. But the problem is that it's something that he's going to quickly understand. A redemption arc means that you are going to be mentless and he's going to be viewerless because people only watch him for the men's. It's the reason why also you watch these videos. Look at the amount of people who only watch those fake mug character studies. Why? Well, it's because they can't get it from the source. The source is dry now. I am the source. I have become the source. Sadly, it is now my destiny to be the provider of men's. And it's uh, interesting because... In the sled video, he titled the video the most boring video I've ever made. I think you're mistaken, Jason. That would be your entire catalog of videos because every time you open your mouth, people want to snooze. It is so painful to hear you talk. You have nothing interesting to add to the discussion. So in reality, the state of your channel in its entirety is the most boring it's ever been because the only thing interesting was when you were making fun of other people because you were completely delusional. But now that you've stopped doing that, there's nothing left. So what you believe is going to be your redemption is also going to be your death. And I'm going to give you three advices. I'm talking directly to you, Jason, to thank you again, to, you know, to give you a treat so that you behave properly uh, in the continuation of your good efforts. Your channel is dead and you're going to stop making ments, so you're going to be even more fucked because people are going to stop watching you entirely. There are three ways that you can apply to save your channel from death. One, you're going to go back and you're going to delete 90% of your videos. Two, you are going to delete all of the fake subscribers you have, right? So you're going to remove them. I don't know how, but I know you have at least 30K fake subs. Get rid of them. They're killing your channel. And three, you are also going to create a new channel. Now, let me explain to you why. I'm doing this out of the kindness of my heart, okay? In the, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, right? Just like the native that would offer the corn, I am the Frenchman that offers the advice to whatever creature you're supposed to be. So the video thing, why you're supposed to delete them is simple. Your videos get no views and no recommendation. By deleting all of the videos, you're going to trick YouTube into believing that you need to be compensated for. Don't, uh, don't ask why I know that, I just know it. It's a glitch in their feature. You have videos that no one watches. You have videos you made 15 times. If you delete them, your channel is going to start doing much better. Two, the reason why you want to delete the fake subs is because they are not interacting because they're fake. So they're not clicking on your videos. It's hurting the channel. Get rid of them. And three, if you manage to round up the 3,000 people that actually watch your channel, start a new channel, the algorithm is going to like you because it's going to think you're popular. Now you have 100K subs and no one watches your videos. You have 1% retention. 
that is not good. This is how you can actually come back to YouTube fitness. And for the people who don't understand why I'm doing that, there's two reasons. One, either we're dealing with good guy Bloho, in which case I see no problem with him actually being able to come back. Or two, he's going to come back with the method I just described. He's going to go insane again from the views because he has an ego and he will produce ments again. And you might tell me, well, you just revealed your plan. There's no point in me trying to hide it. Bloho is mentally ill. Even if he knows that it's his own demise he's creating, he will not be able to stop himself. So it's either the lol cow dies or I manage to resuscitate it and it starts producing uh, ment and milk again. I don't know which it's going to be, but I know for a fact that I don't buy your redemption arc for a second. The only reason why you did that is because I bullied the shit out of you, which, as I said, makes me the marquee of men's. At the end of the day, I am the biggest advocate for your channel because, and you've noticed as well, the past month where I didn't make an episode, your views went down. You know why? Because people are only interested in making fun of you. So when I don't make fun of you, the total interest about Jason Blaha on the internet goes down. You are stuck in the most fucked up purgatory I've ever seen in your life. Meaning that you actually need me to keep making these episodes. If YouTube decided to crack down on them for some reason, it would hurt you. And you know what's so funny too? The dislikes. I don't know if Blow understands what it means, but if the dislikes are actually removed, his channel is going to be beyond repair. Because people are going to stop clicking on your videos to leave dislikes, which means they're not going to click anymore. So you're going to lose 50% of your views. And then it's bye-bye, goodbye channel, it's never going to recover. So you should actually be the biggest advocate around that. But regardless of that, without me, you are essentially boring. And it's important that I say that for one simple reason. I am going to come out, hopefully, next month with a special edition of the Fake Merc Character Study. I'm not promising anything, but it's in the plans. However, some of you guys have been misbehaving. You've been naughty children. And I'm not certain whether Santa is going to put coal or mens in your socks. I'm going to expand on the extent of the damage that some people did to that series next month because I actually discovered a pro Bloho faction hiding in the shadows. It'll be again part of the lore. But you need to understand one thing, and it goes hand in hand with the ments and the fact that Bloho is boring nowadays. You are trying to negotiate with me on grounds that are not really favorable to you, meaning that when you negotiate with someone and you say, for example, give us more ments or give us your sources, you need to have something to offer in exchange or a threat. You have neither, right? You can threaten me. What are you going to do? You're going to do like Bloho? You're going to be at my door? I don't think so. You also have nothing to give me, right? What are you going to do? Stop watching the fake mook stuff? I don't think so. This is your drug. You're injecting that straight into your veins. You will watch regardless of what happens. You know why? Because this is the last place where you can get meds on Bloho. All of the other places are dry out. So you have nothing. Open a book on negotiation tactics and bargaining strategies, son. Because right now, the only thing you're doing to yourself is you're potentially hurting your future with meds. But I know why you do that. You do that because you're desperate. So when someone is desperate, what do they do? They try to create a long car. It's like the people trying to aggravate Bloho. They want to make him lash out. You're trying to make me lash out so that I can become your next long car. Problem is, it's not going to work. I'm too French. You, French people can't be long cows. We are too sophisticated and elegant. But I can tell you one thing. I have my sights set on a very juicy, very plump long cow. One I've been waiting to milk for a long time. And I can tell you that when I start, quand je, quand je vais commencer la, à serrer le pis là, there's going to be a lot of milk. All right? I'm going to milk that little cow and provide you with all of its juicy ments. I'm starting to prepare it. It's going to take a long time, but it's going to happen. All right? I'm not going to let the ments die out. Even if Bloho somehow bores us to death 
other people in YouTube fitness are still very interesting. Which doesn't mean that the series is over, by the way, because regardless of what you might think, I still have plenty of men's to share with you guys. Plenty. But as I said, they're mostly in the past or they're mostly sourceless. And for the reason why I'm not sharing my sources, some people have asked, I will actually disclaim that next month. It's part of the entire war I'm waging with a certain faction of people. Now that I've said that, let's get into the actual video because I just spent some time talking about the deadlift and talking about the actual situation with Bloho. Let's get into the proper men's. As you've seen from the title, the title is a joke because one, Bloho actually is decently lean nowadays. But on top of that, it's also a reference to culinary men's. We're going to talk about food today. And to open that segment, I am going to start with a testimony because I've managed to secure and score a direct testimony from one of Bloho's students, aka one that followed Kof. Right? Jesus had the apostles, Bloho has the retards, I don't know what we can call them. But that guy was nice enough to give me a testimony as someone who paid Bloho. So he, he's, a, he's a retired retard. He used to be not all there in the head and now he actually he saw the light. It was actually tough because I had to sift through a pile of shitheads that were trying to feed me false information and make stuff up. Sadly for them, I have access to enough information to know who's actually real and who's not. Because Bloho is really bad at hiding the identity of the people who actually pay him. He doesn't understand that he's supposed to protect them, I guess. So they're easy to track on the internet. You can see which ones actually send stuff to Bloho or posted a video of them or they call it for Jason Bloho. That's really weird. The fact that you're asking teenagers to post videos of them benching shirtless and putting your name in the title, you understand that if one day by miracle you decide to get a job, your employer is going to see that. When they type Jason Bloho, they're going to see one, all of these fake mugs videos from yours truly. Then they're going to see videos of shirtless teens with your name in the title. Like that, that sort of outs you as a pedo, doesn't it? Maybe you should ask them to delete these videos. But that guy in particular, I verified he's 100% on it. He was actually coughed by Bloho for a total of four months. And I'm going to tell you his testimony and what he went through. But before that, let me check the time. Okay, so to celebrate um, part 18 and the fact that you didn't have an episode last, uh, last month, I might take a little bit more time. Maybe an hour, we'll see. Maybe 15 minutes, we'll see. So, this testimony, that guy in particular, how did he find Bloho in the first place? That's a good question. How would a teen stumble upon that creature of a man and think, hmm, it's a good idea for me to pay him so that he would actually teach me how to look like him, I guess. Well, just like most of the people I found, he found him from a fitness back page that was shilling the Jason Bloho ice cream fitness 5x5. And actually, the majority of his clients find him through that. They don't find him through his channel. His channel is completely invisible on YouTube fitness. But he still has a name back from he, when he was actually popular. And all of the kids actually find him from that because his email didn't change from back then. So they can still contact him. So he contacted him. They con conducted a Skype interview, which also proves that the only moments he accepts Skype calls is when he can verify that the person is a kid, which is also very concerning. And in the Skype call, this is what I was told. I was told that he's shirtless on camera. So again, another pedal point. Why are you fucking shirtless on camera with a teen? That's really weird. He was apparently flexing all the way through the call. So he was like this to show off his traps. Apparently the camera was set up at an angle to reshow only his shoulders and traps and his bald head in a closet. Like you don't have an actual room to do your recording. And by closet, I don't mean like a small washing machine room or something like this. An actual closet. Like you could see behind him the doors of the closet like this with the ray of light in the middle. 
this is concerning. I mean, if I told you that I know a guy who goes in his closet and then starts Skyping kids, what would be the first thing you think? That he's a predator, right? That you're supposed to knock on his door and tell him to have a seat right over there. And yet he believes that he believes that to be a good uh, business plan. He also apparently speaks about himself quite a lot, although uh, most of the time to gas himself up, because he claims, and that is a direct quote, to spend upwards of a week per month to visit his girlfriend. That reminded me of something. It reminded me of that kid we all knew in high school who pretended to have a girlfriend that went to a different school. And if you ask him her, her name, he would invent something. If you told him, hey, can we meet her? They'll tell you, oh, they live too far. Like, oh, they live in Canada. Well, that's, that's that, but by a 45-year-old man that looks like a ninja turtle. So not only do you Skype like a creep, but on top of that, you have the need, you feel the need to make believe and to imagine an entire life for yourself to look better in the eyes of a kid. Because the person that I interrogated was 16. Like, why are, you, why are you trying to flex to a 16-year-old? That's really strange. We also know that you are not visiting your girlfriend. What woman would wait three weeks out of a month to get the chance to finally see you for a week. Like that would make no sense whatsoever. I cannot even imagine a scenario where an actual human woman would want that. He also says that people are lucky to get spots as if he was really busy. I don't think that a busy coach would live the way you live. I don't think that a busy coach would have the YouTube channel that you have. I think that you say that to convince teens to not actually go away because the thing that was the most shocking is that he doesn't, and I say shocking ironically, he doesn't manage to retain clients, meaning that the vast majority of them stay for two, three months, then they bounce. It's the reason why he's constantly saying on his Facebook page, oh, I need, I have five spots open or for January, there's two spots open, only two left. No, there's not only two left. You absolutely need those two filled because you have, you have no clients. They all go away. And when a client doesn't go away, he makes videos about them until they do. Like he did with that guy that was just a copycat of him that also looked to be clinically retarded. Now he's doing that with that Emma chick. Girl that, by the way, was contacted, but for some reason decided that she was fine associating with you. So I guess that get what deserves. I don't care what happened to that girl. She picked her own destiny. She was warned about you. But it also shows how little of an audience he has because even these videos don't work anymore. He has an audience of middle-aged losers and incels. And even with that, he doesn't manage to get them interested in videos that are basically just softcore porn when he shows off a woman. I didn't mention it previously, but I've also spied on him and his efforts to grow his channel, and he's mostly trying to recruit on in-store websites and forums. And the fact that you can't even get that portion of the population that's desperate to look at a woman squatting or deadlifting is telling. It really shows that you are losing your power in terms of actually attracting people who want to look at your garbage. He also uh, kept saying that his FFMI was 27, which is two above Arnold. I believe Arnold was maybe 25, six, maybe 26. So you're supposedly more muscular than Arnold at his peak by one full point. For reference, I myself might be around 23, 24 FFMI. Who does he think he's kidding? I mean, even that kid I was talking to was like, yeah, I didn't believe that for a second. Your target audience are people who are fresh out of middle school because it's the only people you can get. And even when you target that demographic, you target the weak ones because the guy I interrogated also had um, a mental illness, but I'll, I'll get to that. And even then, you can't even spin lies that are believable enough for them to bite. I don't know what you're trying to pull here, but I also was told by many of your past clients that you try to pass down, pass as a father to them, like you give them fatherly advice and you make dad jokes. The only thing it does is it makes them uncomfortable. The amount of people I spoke to who told me that they couldn't stand your fucking giraffe joke. You know what joke I'm talking about? 
It's the joke when someone squats high and you tell them, oh, it was higher than giraffe's pussy. Enough. Enough of that. Okay, you traumatize enough kid with that joke. It's not funny. It wasn't funny the first time. And the 15th time, it's certainly not funny either. The fact that so many of them reported that to me is telling, is you traumatize them with that, bull that, uh, that bullshit. Now, onto the actual training, right? Because you pay someone to coach you so that they can train you. Apparently, he puts people on super easy, low volume training. Sounds familiar? It's exactly the way he trains. He is trying to make an army of himself. He's trying to blackpill people. He's trying to turn people into bloho, into fat slobs. And the way he does that is he prescribes them super easy training regimens with like one rep max deadlift, one rep max squat. I mean, that might be tough in the moment, but it's not enough volume to grow bloho. You should know that. One look at the mirror should tell you that this is not enough to grow. Why do you continuously give that to your clients? They are not going to get big off of that. You didn't. You are on grams of stuff. You take steroids. You've been taking steroids for 15 years and look at you. You look terrible. What do you think some 14-year-old is going to be able to accomplish with like three reps of squat a week? It's not possible. You need to see that. I Apparently, now you listen when I bully you. So it's great. I bullied you into apologizing. My next step is I'm going to bully you into stopping your stupid client business. He also tells people to gain one kilogram a month when they're young and bulking, which sounds reasonable until you realize that he's completely incapable of doing math. So that particular client was told that to gain one kilogram a month, he was supposed to bump his calories from 3,500 to 4,300. That is an increase of 22%. An increase of 22% does not result in one kilogram of gain a month. Depending on the individual, it could be much more. But apparently, he doesn't know that because he flunked out of community college. And so basic math is out of his reach. So he tells people, hey, gain one kilogram a month, then they gain three or four, and he's just clueless because he's not doing the calculus properly. He's just upping the calories randomly up plus 800 calories. Like, do you know what it is in a teenager's diet? 800? It's another meal. You're scheduling another meal. That's way too much of an increase. So what has to happen happens. That person, that client got fat because, of course, a 22% increase like this, like one day to the other, of course, you're going to get fat. You, you think what? The body is going to use that for muscle? Well, that's what he believes because he was quoted to say, gaining weight is the equivalent of gaining muscle. So to him, if you gain 10 pounds, that's 10 pounds of muscles. Now, do you understand why he became obese? Why he's still a fat fuck? It's because he doesn't understand that just because you put on weight and you get stronger doesn't mean you built muscle. And it's not just him. A large portion of powerlifters with big quotation marks, powerlifters, think like that. They think, oh, I'm just going to stuff my face and that's going to work. Like that's muscle. No, it's not. It's called fat. It's called adipose tissue. And the problem is that when you do that to a teenager, you're screwing them up because you're essentially turning them into you. He was also quoted to say that even if your training is not 100%, you will still gain muscle as long as you eat a lot of food. Again, no. That is fat. It's fat gain. But this is a doctrine that he's always spouted on his channel. When you tell him, hey, your program is shit, he'll tell you, no, it's because you don't eat enough. That's your solution for everything. Just get, get fatter. Get fatter and your life will be better. You'll get stronger. Well, no, duh. Your weight is increasing. The weight on the bar is increasing. You know what it is? Stasis. You're not getting stronger. You're just becoming bigger, so you're moving bigger weights. Becoming stronger would be staying at the same weight and gaining strength, putting weight on the bar. But he doesn't get that for himself, so how could he get that for other people? He also apparently believed that food is anabolic, which is true, but it's anabolic in the sense that it's making you gain mass. Anabolism is just a state where your body builds. It doesn't mean that it builds muscle, blowhole. 
I know that you're getting into anime, that's great, it might change you for the better, but don't fall into the pitfall of believing that just stuffing your face like Goku is going to turn you into a Super Saiyan. It'll just give you diabetes at the rate you're at. Food is the driver of mass gains if you actually train. If you don't train, you just end up fat. That's an evidence, but the problem is that that young kid wasn't aware, so they gained a ton of weight and they were starting to develop massive bodily issues. And so they were starting to complain. And when the client started to complain, what did Bloho say? Did he, went, did he go back and did he say, oh, it's my bad, I'm going to reduce your calories, etc.? No, of course not. What he says is that the client must keep eating because it doesn't matter if he gets fat, he needs to build a base. A base of what exactly? Heart attack, diabetes, like a base, a base of strength. If he cuts down that weight, all of that strength is going to go out the window. He's going to piss it down his pants. And you've known that and you've seen that because even though you do look much better than you used to be now, it's because you cut down. And because you cut down, you can barely squat 500 pounds anymore. What happened to the road to 700? You struggle with a one rep max, 500 pounds squat, and your back bends like this. You're going to snap yourself up. You know that it's because you lost the weight and also because I do believe that you're starting to cut down on the fake plates. Once you remove the box, the, the blubber and the fake plate, you lost 200 pounds on the squat. That kid is going to be the same thing. It's going to be the same way, but you don't get it. So now get it through your fixed core. Step away from that. Right? The few rare clients that you get that you lose after two months, you're only hurting them. I know you're a piece of shit, but still, right? I'm sure that I can get to make you reconsider. I think that this episode or maybe next episode is going to make you reconsider. So that's what happened with the client. A client that at some point uh, started to realize that he was being duped. So they tried to actually cut weight. And they did that by just hanging out with actually athletic people who ate normal diets, not just rice and, and beef three times a day. And guess what happens? They lost weight and they started looking better. You know what Bloho did when he found out? When he found out that his client lost weight and was feeling better, he upped the calorie intake by 60%. 60%. He forced the kid to gain 3 kilograms a month. The kid that was telling them that it was making them miserable, he didn't care for a second. And when the kid was like, all right, I'm literally getting, becoming obese, he said that it was all water and glycogen. You ruining your own health and looking like a seal is fine, but don't project that shit on other people, right? You look at your gut and you say, oh, it's just water and roughage from fibers. No, it's not. You're obese. That's your prerogative to be a fat lot, but leave kids alone, all right? That's, that's my new slogan. Leave kids alone, all right? You never had kids of your own, thank God. So don't go messing up other people's kids, I think it's a perfectly fine thing to say. And no, people who are under reading are not killing their gains. You are just facilitating the development of eating disorders in children. And that is simply not okay. So since you know nothing about diet, I highly recommend you actually step down as Kof and you just become a regular lifter that just does things for himself because you have a lot of things to work on. And to continue on the diet portion of this video, in terms of things you need to work on, Jason, and of past men's, because this was present time, we can discuss the multiple attempts you have made at cutting weight that didn't pan out. Last time, I think at the end of part 17, I spoke about his weird attempt at making a video where he was eating bananas and he was presenting that as like a feat, something incredible which in reality was an attempt of him to get at, uh, I think her name was Freely the Banana Girl, who is a vegan chick on YouTube that likes bananas. He tried to seduce her by eating a ton of bananas, which truly goes to show that the way his mind works is so interesting. Like he thought, hmm, Banana Girl likes banana. Me eat banana for camera. Banana Girl likes me. 
Did it work, Jason? Did Banana Girl actually contact you? I don't think so. I think she doesn't even know you exist. You, however, left a valuable mess behind because you staring into a camera for 10 minutes, slowly slipping on bananas, is both revolting and also a top hilarious mint. We also can discuss the Yakitori video, one that I might have seen maybe 10 times because it's always nice to revisit his past failures. There's actually a great video about that, the recomp that never was, it's still on YouTube, where it was a time where he was trying to recomp to increase his outreach, aka look aesthetic, to be able to get clicks. And he wanted to write a, an ebook about his experience. Based on what I've seen from your writings, I am glad this never happened because you write at a third rate level and that's being generous. Of course, the ebook never materialized because he never actually lost the weight, but it was great to see him stuff his face with sugary yakitoris and discuss how he's going to look amazing because we all knew back then it was going to happen and it, of course, didn't happen. There is also his disgusting breakfast videos where he stuffs his face. I'm not going to go too in-depth about that. So I have no idea why you thought it was a good choice or pick for your channel to have that type of content on. The only thing it was is it was revolting. But he cut down on that. Thank God. Again, maybe because you were listening to me. Because you were understanding that it just wasn't proper. I truly have the feeling that I'm raising a dog. I, I know I already used the dog metaphor, but at some point or the other, I expect a, a, mail, a letter from you in the mail, right? Because, of course, your buddy cops know my address, as you've told me in some threatening messages you sent, so you know where I live. I want a letter from you where you thank me for all of my services, and I want a check, too, of whatever money you have left, because I'm essentially your psychiatrist, or more accurately, I am your tall wrangler, meaning that I am sort of making you navigate life, like you're bumping on the walls and I'm sort of making sure that you don't actually run into traffic. You're welcome for that, by the way. Um, that leads me, I lost my line, to the, hmm, yes, the topic about competitive eating, because he at some point boasted about being an amazing competitive eater. And he claimed to be able to eat, I think it was something insane, like 10 large family-sized pizzas, which amounted to like 40k calories, which is of course impossible. But the reason why you can't do that, Jason, is because your teeth are fucked. And we both know that. We both know you can't eat what you like to eat. Even back then, in that famous uh, Thanksgiving meant where you were eating a peck and pie by yourself in front of the camera to show that the haters didn't win, we could see in your eyes the pain of the peck, the, the peck and just getting into pecan. I think someone corrected me, it's pecan pie, getting into your gums. This was like three years ago. We all know that your teeth are much worse now. The only thing you can eat is soup and rice. And bison, it's for the title of this, this video too, his weird obsession with bison. Where does it come from exactly? Well, I'll tell you where it comes from. One, it comes from Brian Shaw, because Brian Shaw is famous for replacing beef by bison in some of his meals. The only difference is that Brian Shaw gets his bison, I think, locally sourced. You get your bison at Costco. Costco sourced bison is the lowest quality bison you can get, but he's so incapable of understanding that, that he believes that eating it makes him middle class. He thinks it's a rare cut of meat. The bison, the, the, the bison that you eat that's from Costco is all of the shitty parts of the bison that are mixed together. It's the stuff that was supposed to be thrown away. You're getting the bad part. And again, it doesn't mean that you're rich because you eat bison. One meant that I'm sure you guys don't know about is that at some point, he was pretending he was going to buy a cabin in Colorado, but his big plan was he was going to raise bison. So he was going to have like a, a chapter, he was going to have a hood of bisons. I don't know why he wanted to do that. I think it's because it sounds a little bit co co cowboyish. So it's like the, the Far West and John Wayne, it sounds cool. I don't think you can handle that. I think that 
within a second of you trying to handle these animals, one of them would charge you. And also, what the fuck happened to my friend the cow? I thought it was evil to eat animals. Now you want to have bisons and kill them for their meat? Where are your convictions? Where are your principles? You're flip-flopping all over the fucking place. So that's for the video title and also the connection with Brian Shaw. A connection that goes deeper than you might think. Because he also jumped on the vertical diet to copy Brian Shaw. He wanted a house in Colorado just like Brian Shaw has. I think he sees him, he sees someone who's big and he sees someone who's popular and he finds a likeness because he believes they're both strength athletes and they're both bold, so they're the same. Uh, Brian Shaw is a six feet eight monster of a man and he's a multiple times world's strongest man as well. He's not you, right? You're way below him. He doesn't even know your name. You trying to copy his lifestyle really does nothing for you. You need to find your own personality. Also, I was informed by many people that the way he does the vertical diet is completely idiotic. Of course, because he cannot understand concepts more complicated than tying his shoes. So, when it comes to actually a food pyramid and prioritizing certain types of foods, his brain just short circuits. Like the orange juice thing. Someone actually told me that. They were telling me that it's actually part of the vertical diet. But it's supposed to be something you eat to bring up your appetite and never to replace vegetables. Bro just saw orange juice. His mind said, oh, orange, it's a fruit. So I can just replace whatever I want with it. And he did it. This is not how diet works. Just like with keto. That fat idiot was on keto by drinking milk. He would drink a gallon of milk a day. There's enough carbs in a gallon of milk to take you out of ketosis. Right? You, you, you don't understand that? I mean, it's the basics of the basics. The basic of keto is that you don't eat carbs. That's not how to follow. This is also the reason why I say that he was never vegan in his life. Because there is absolutely no way he would have been able to remember what veganism is. Like within two hours, he would be gnawing on bacon. And then someone would be like, uh, that's not vegan, Jason. And he'd be like, eh? Bacon not vegan? Eh? Because he's really that dumb. It's, I think it's the reason why he eats like a mental patient. Rice and, and bison. That's very easy to follow, right? It's a simple repetition. Rice and bison, rice and bison. That way, he doesn't start eating plastic or something. And I think that's what's keeping him alive. And also the reason why you should not be giving dietary advice, Jason. Because you don't understand diet. And also the quality of what you put in your mouth despite purple dildos, tends to be extremely low. Like the bison, like broiled meat. That's a crime. I thought you were a Texan. Broiled meat? Like you're supposed to barbecue your ribs, not broil them. Anyone who puts a piece of red meat in, in boiling water is a degenerate. I don't care who you are or where you come from. It's disgusting. But you know why he does that? It's because he has no teeth. He cannot eat a piece of red meat. It's way too tough for him. So he needs to tenderize it. And the only thing to do that is to boil it. Meaning also that it loses all of its value, nutrients, and taste. This is absolutely revolting. And by the way, for the people who ask, yes, that's how he brought his meat. He just dumped it in boiling water. And then it just looks mushy. I mean, again, with the quality of the cuts you get, it's not a big loss. Still... With his egg, he got, um, what is the name of that store? Walgreens Eggs. And I'm not saying he went to Walgreens, but you know when you go to a certain store and they are not supposed to have food, but they somehow have eggs, and you know that these are like the lowest quality eggs you can put your hands on? That's the eggs he used to get. It's the one in the white polystyrene, uh, uh, polystyrene uh, little thingy, and they're extremely white, almost transparent, because there's, there's no nutrients. Like the yellow of the egg is almost white because it's so devoid of anything because it's the only thing he can get his hands on. So shit meat, shit eggs, shit wine. That is an offense I cannot let slide, right? The quality of wine he would get, if I were to describe it and transfer that to France, is the stuff that even homeless people don't want to drink. It's what we call a villageoise. It's wine that's in a plastic bottle, which is already a red flag, that is essentially vinegar. 
It's like the shittiest one you can get. It's like maybe $3 a bottle. That's what he used to drink. And he was trying to pretend that it was fancy. Worse than that, he put it in the fridge. You never put wine, red wine, in the fridge, Jason, ever. But again, he just looks at what he thinks is fancy, so wine and bison, and then he just takes the cheapest version of that and he thinks it somehow heightens his status. Any woman that you would sit down at a table and slide down a bowl of rice and bison and then wine in a cheap plastic cup would walk up and leave, right? Most animals would walk up and leave because it's just not acceptable. A normal human cannot tolerate that type of diet. You, for some reason, can, but it's because I believe that you are part toad. Then there is the rice, rice that costs absolutely nothing. A rice that I am certain he doesn't know how to cook. It's just, I just know, he doesn't know how to cook rice. He would eat frozen vegetables of the lowest quality possible as well. When you're too lazy to just get vegetables and cook them, you know that there's a problem with you. It's not like he lives in the tundra like I do where there's nothing for eight months. He lives in Texas. There's plenty of veggies and fruits. And yet he's still so fucking lazy that he has to buy frozen veggies because he doesn't know how to cook. So 45 years old, doesn't know how to swim, doesn't know how to cook. That is very promising. He will also get government cheese. And yes, um, it's something that I had noticed where he, back, back then when he still was thinking that people were going to be fooled by it, he would post pictures of his food. It was the most disgusting thing you've ever seen. Also, the arrangement of the food was a nightmare. But most importantly, the cheese on the plate was government cheese. And for the people who don't know what it is, if you're poor enough and you qualify for food stamps, you can queue up and they give you a block of cheese and it's called government cheese. And it's a really rough, really yellow cheese that is hyper-processed. It's, it's high-octane garbage. It's basically the shittiest type of dairy you can put your, put your hands on. Like you eat that shit, for, uh, that shit for a week, you get prostate cancer. That's it. You, you're done. But that's what he used to put on his food. So picture this. A paper plate with in the middle frozen veggies that aren't even frozen, unfrozen properly, that are still half frozen, with slices of government cheese and then a broad stick. Does that sound like a balanced diet or dinner to you? For me, it doesn't. But it's terrifying to see that he actually told people that they would have to eat that to be able to become big. There's also the fact that he has said himself that he can gain 10 pounds without noticing. And this is when he copes. This is when he tells you that he has felt his recomp because he, for some reason his wife forced him to eat food or he didn't redo, do his cut because he woke up one day 10 pounds heavier. If you actually stuck to the diet that you describe, even though it's disgusting food, it wouldn't be possible because these are not high calorie food. And also they're high sa uh, satiation foods. What I believe you do is you flex and you pretend to eat what you believe to be fancy food and then you stuff your face with cakes. That's what's really happening. This is how you gain 10 pounds in a week without noticing. How is that even possible? 10 pounds is a lot of weight to put on. This is a lot of food to stuff your face with. This also means that you're not qualified to give people dietary advice. You can't even calculate your own calories. And that is going to lead, I believe, to an early heart attack because the food I just described is not good for you, right? The frozen veggies might be the only thing that is somehow going to salvage his health. But for the rest, this is not the type of diet that a very sedentary 50-year-old man is supposed to follow. Also, keep in mind one thing, uh, Jason, this is again from the heart, okay? In the spirit of Thanksgiving, early tooth decay is a sign of incoming heart problems that has been proven times and times again. So keep in mind that all of that brown here might be a reflection of the brown here in your heart. And I'm not just talking about spirituality. I'm thinking about your actual physical body or, or what is left of it. But that doesn't mean that you're going to do anything about it either because I don't believe that you have money for blood tests. 
because the last time you actually went and got tested in terms of body fat, it was a complete fiasco. I don't know if you guys remember, but there used to be a time where he was trying to prove that he was somehow managing to shed fat and gain muscle, which resulted in him essentially coming afterwards with the scan, the body fat scan, and showing the result and saying, look, guys, I lost fat. Well, no, because you never provided us with the scan beforehand. It's supposed to be a comparison. It doesn't work like that. This is why it doesn't work to employ science when you can barely calculate basic math. Okay, You can't even do percentages for your clients. So don't try to use something as advanced as a scan for your body fat percentage. Plus, even if the scan somehow said that you lost 50 pounds of fat, if you still look like shit at the end, it really doesn't make a difference. But coming from the guy that was quote to, quoted to say, have I gained fat? No. When he became literally obese in 2017, it's no surprise. It's the wheelchair era. It's when he was becoming so fat that people were starting to think that he was actually stuck in a wheelchair because he was starting to get, you know, those fat rolls that fat people get in their necks that look like neck pillows. Yeah, he was starting to get that. It looked like a tumor. I was concerned. You know the Harry Potter movie, the first one where there's like Voldemort in the back of the head of the guy? I thought that this was going to happen. Like he never had kids, but he was somehow developing like a second blowhole at the back of his head and would have to deal with two of them. It never happened, but when people pointed it out, he said, oh, yes, I've gained weight, but have I gained fat? No. Well, yeah, of course, because you believe that any weight gained is muscle, which is not the case. So your advice is bad, and you also absolutely need to stop telling kids and your clients to do GOMAD. Look at what GOMAD did for you. It's not good, all right? For people who are super athletic and who actually spend thousands of calories each day working out, it might be an option, but not for you, certainly not for you. And your advice on food addiction is also bad because out of the six people that I interrogated, you gave food uh, problems and you gave not food addictions, but you gave uh, body image issues to all of them. So refrain from that. And I will end with this. No, Bloho, snacking on blueberries like Brian Shaw does is not the sign of a balanced diet. It's the sign of your delusion. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.